It is ready. Before you take the bullet into the stand, you see that there should not be air bubble in the bullet first. Then you have to see that you have filled the bullet solution till the mouth of the bullet. So these are the things you have to see before you fit into the bullet stand. Now we come to see how to fill the preferred solution. Packer out the solution is very very important. First you have to rinse with the water the same way how you rinse the burette with the burette solution potassium permanganate. Take the water and tilt it and rotate it and pour it out in the sink. See, the small beaker is ferrous ammonium sulfate. So I am going to pipe out the solution 20 ml from the beaker to the conical flask. Before that, we have to rinse this one also with the ferrous ammonium sulfate. The same way. How you rinse with water the same way you have to rinse with a little amount of ferrous ammonium sulfate and pour it into the sink. Now you are preparing out the solution carefully. See, you have to be tilt it slowly so that the solution will come and uh, drop by drop it will go to the beaker so that you can mean it. Yes, exactly now I come to the 0 cc slope. Okay, slowly I have to tilt it. Slowly. Yeah, exactly now it is 20 cc. Take it out and then Pour it into the conical flask. Don't blow the pipette, just tilt the conical flask and tap the pipette in the side two times and take it out. That only 20 ml. Now you have to take one test tube of dilute sulfuric acid that is approximately 20 ml so take uh, one test tube of 2N dilute sulfuric acid and that also should be added along with the pipette solution so I take uh, approximately one test tube of dilute sulfuric acid to the conical flask so now the conical flask contains pipette solution and the dilute sulfuric acid Start the titration. You have to take your left hand and keep your thumb finger in one side and the, uh, lady, the other fingers should support in the opposite side. And just release the lid slowly by drop by drop you have to add it. Till you get a pale pink color. You have to get a pale pink color you have to add. Slowly you have to add. See always you have to look into the types, there are only the pale pink color you can see correctly. Now almost you come to an end, okay. So you have to be carefully your hand. Yes, I got it. See this is exact but Pale pink color. You can see it in the types, then only you can see very clearly. This is the pale pink color. This is the end point. 
note down the end point. The end point is exactly 19.9. 19.9. So I will enter this value now in this place. The volume of K1 of 4 solution. K1 of 4 solution is 19.9. See, initially I have taken 0 ml and finally I have reached 19.9. Second time also I have to repeat, that time also I am getting the same 19.9. Concordant value means you should get the same value continuously in the titrations. So I am getting the same value only in the first and second titration. So this must be the concordant value 19.9. That value should be entered in the calculation part volume of payment of our solution V1 is equal to 19.9 ml. In the calculation 1, we are calculating the normality of K minus 4 solution by using the normality equation. The law of volumetric analysis says that V1 N1 is equal to V2 N2. So N1 is equal to V2 N2 by V1. V2 20. N2 is 0.1102 V1 that's how we found out 19.9 so the value is 0.1107 N so we find out the normality of a potassium carbonate solution that is equal to 0.1107 N in titration 2 we have to take n of our solution and the unknown ferrous sulfate solution. We are doing the titration the same way we have done it in the titration 1. The pure solution is potassium permanganate and the prepared solution is ferrous sulfate. So here in the prepared we are taking the ferrous sulfate solution. Always the prepared solution, ferrous sulfate is your it's a colorless solution like we are seeing in ferrous ammonium sulfate in the titration 1. Colorless solution, when you take it in the pit pad, see that the 0 cc should be coincide with the lower viniscus. In colorless solution, it is upper viniscus, or colorless solution, it is lower viniscus. You are doing the titration the same way and you are getting the end point now. 22.4 so here the initial is 0 first 22.4 I am getting and second time also I am getting 22.4 so the concordant value is 22.4 enter this value in the volume of potassium permanganate solution V2 V2 is 22.4 ml, 4 ml. And normality of potassium permanganate we have calculated already in titration 1 that is 0.1107 N. Substitute this value 22.4 into N2 is 0.1107 and 20. When you calculate, you are getting the value 0.1239N. 0.1239N. And that will be the normality of ferrous sulfate solution. From the normality of ferrous sulfate, we can calculate the amount of ferrous sulfate dissolved in 750 ml. You know the weight calculation, this is the very, very important formula. You should know it, weight per liter is equal to equivalent weight into normality. So weight is equal to equivalent weight into normality into liters. So now we are finding the amount of ferrous sulfate dissolved in 750 ml of the solution. So, seven, so what equivalent weight of ferrous sulfate is 278 already I have written in the short procedure. Substitute the equivalent weight of ferrous sulfate 278. The normality of ferrous sulfate 0.1239. See that the liters we have to write 
but the amount of ferrous sulfate they ask only in some 50 ml. Converting the ml to liter, we have to give it by thousand. That is why 750 by thousand you are doing. So you are getting the value of 25.83 grams. You are getting 25.83 grams. And that is the amount of ferrous sulfate dissolving 750 ml of the ferrous sulfate solution. 25.83 grams. That is the amount of ferrous sulfate in 750 ml. These are the things we are to do it to calculate the amount of ferrous sulfate. Once again, I repeat. First, we are finding the normality of KMnO4 in the titration one. And in titration 2, we are finding the normality of ferrous sulfate. And finally, we are doing the rate calculation and we have to write the report with the last. And listen, one more thing I wanted to tell you before I close this. Always take the V1 and N1, the N1 normality to be calculated. That only question mark. See, here also N1 is the question mark. Here also N1 is the question mark. So, the unknown normality should be N1. So, the V1 also the same type solution in titration 1 and titration 2. Do leisurely and do correctly and get the right answer. Thank you. Thank you once again. And I will meet you in the second biomedical analysis.